Rangarajan. I'm a systems analyst. I work in uh, San Diego. I work for a company called Qualcomm. Qualcomm basically makes the chips, 3G, 4G, CDMA, 5G chips for most of the smartphones out there. Pretty much all the smartphones out there use our technology. Okay? The topic of today's talk for me is how we used Oracle Application Express to build a project and a portfolio management tool. Okay? Can you hear me all right though? All right. So uh, with a show of hands, how many people here are familiar with Oracle Application Express? Okay. Okay, so that will give you an idea how deep I want to go, how much I want to introduce that particular uh, tool set. All right. So the agenda for today's talk, I'm going to start with an introduction about myself, my career, and how I got into the Oracle space. Um, an overview of the solution, a demo of the solution, and then also go through, go through some, if time permits, some code walkthrough, and then have questions and answers in the, in the, in the, in the end. So something about me, my role is I kind of do many things at Qualcomm, but primarily driving the digital strategy at Qualcomm. Uh, build solutions that help us automate things and onboard customers and make things self-service. Um, I'm involved in pretty much every aspect of the application, right from CSS to C-level presentation. What that means is you've got to be a full-stack developer nowadays, and you have to be in involved in every aspect of the project to be successful, so that's kind of my role. Uh, I've worked for Oracle in the past, and I've been with Qualcomm for the past 10 years. And some of the solutions that we deployed at Qualcomm have won innovation awards. We won an Oracle Innovation Award for the e-commerce solution that we deployed, and then uh, Innovation Award for sustainability for an application that we built that helps us track conflict mineral in our supply chain. All right, so let me talk about uh, what the problem statement is. Uh, one of my primary focus at Qualcomm today is running our e-commerce platform. The e-commerce platform has eight different groups that are owners of that platform. So every group has different requests coming at us. And we have a really small team that's trying to uh, kind of run that platform and add, add enhancements and um, bug fixes and whatnot. So we have sales, finance, logistics, product management, program management, engineering, all the different groups coming at us saying, hey, we need to add this new product on the platform. We need to figure out a way how we, how we are going to do licensing, how we are going to sell software. So what happens is we, I started getting requests from many different groups, and it was becoming really hard to track the request and maintain a roadmap, track the budget, and all that kind of thing. In addition to that, Qualcomm being a big organization has many different tools that do similar things. So we have HP's PPM. If you're familiar with that, it got bought over by Microfocus, I believe. It's a, uh, it's a change management tool set. That's used by one of the groups that I work with. Then we have ServiceNow. We have Jira for uh, incident tracking and also for sprint management. In addition to that, we have multiple e-business suites, uh, two different instances of Oracle e-business suites running, uh, and then a litany of other tools and communication that happen over email and SharePoint and whatnot. So what was needed was a centralized place to manage our products, to manage the request, and have like a product management solution in place. So that's, that's what the uh, use case was. I wanted a place where I could have roadmaps, releases, resources, change management, and reports, and everything tracked in one place. With that in mind, what we came up with eventually looks like this. This is what we call as the Sales Center Platform Dashboard. This is the dashboard that we use to track the changes and the life cycle of changes in the platform. It starts from a very high level, where you get a roadmap of your projects, all the various different projects that you're working on. They go to the next level where you have a Kanban board. Go to the next level where you can see which resource is allocated to what and track all the way to support requests and see how well we are uh, responding to support requests that are coming to us from various different channels. Okay. So what did we build this in? Um, for those who are not familiar, we used a tool set called Oracle Application Express. It's a free, I would not say free, they call it a no cost addition to Oracle uh, database. It ships with Oracle database since 2004, and I think the, late, the latest version that they have is Oracle 5.1.4, and that's what we are on. In terms of the database, the solution was uh, originally built in Oracle XE 11G. So we didn't even go to the enterprise um, uh, uh, installation. The reason being, if you work for a big company, you know how complicated it is to procure servers, install software, and all that. You could just download it 
from oracle.com and start using it right away. So that's what prompted this. So uh, downloaded it from Oracle and started building the application over a period of time. Now it's mature, so we are going to kind of put it in a, a more robust environment. So what are the advantages of using Oracle Application Express? It's one platform for the whole life cycle of the project. It's a ag if you want to do agile project management or product development, Application Express is a really good fit for that. Uh, it helps you with the user-focused design. It's database-centric, but you can do user-focused design. So instead of waiting for two weeks or a month before the user can actually see the layout, you can start with a user layout in mind. Okay? It's a browser-based development framework, so you're not leaving your browser to develop. Uh, you don't need to download complicated JDevelop and all those tools. You can just do it over the, over the browser. It comes uh, with an excellent design library, uh, especially with after 5.0. Uh, the material, uh, the design that come, uh, come out in the latest version, um, it pretty much has every component that you need to build a robust web-based either mobile or desktop application. And it's a one-click deploy, so once you're done with it, you just uh, save it and it's ready to go. Okay? So easy to iterate, easy to add more functionality to it over a period of time. What kind of skill set do you need uh, to be able to use this uh, platform? Foundational, HTML, some knowledge of HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, S SQL. Again, it's a database-centric platform. So whatever you do in the database can be exposed through a web layer, which can be accessed either through a browser or through a mobile. Advanced, if you want to do some fancy stuff, then you get into things like jQuery and JSON and REST. That's when you are integrating with other JavaScript libraries. In my case, I wanted to use uh, the Oracle Jet visual visualization components. So I had to like dig in a little bit and then um, integrate that and learn a little bit of knockout and other stuff to be able to integrate that with this. In terms of a skill set, from the left to the right, it's declarative and low code. So to the left is, I would say, a little bit more complicated. And to the right, as you go, it's uh, um, less complicated in terms of how much code you need to write. So. Apex kind of is a good fit for somebody who's got a PL SQL background and an Oracle Forms background. And then the previous session, they demoed the Oracle, uh, what they call it, business services, uh, visual builder services. Again, that's pretty much similar to Oracle Apex, I think, in a lot of ways, but I think it has a lot of integration built into it. So what, what was the functionality that we had eventually? So this platform has a way for us to track, plan and track the demand that's coming in. So. We have a roadmap management in terms of Gantt charts and um, um, uh, track percentages of completion, where the demand is coming from, who the sponsors are. We have a Kanban board and much detailed way to manage the releases. Now the thing is, it's not working in isolation. This tool itself integrates with PPM, the HPS PPM. So if I'm looking at the status of a particular request, I'm also able to get the status of the associated change request that's been created in PPM. Traditionally, what used to happen was we used to look at the request here, then log into PPM and see and make sure the case is in the correct status so that it can be released in the next release cycle. The advantage now is everything is in one place, and I can know, okay, this release has been QA tested, and it's ready for development, uh, it's ready for production, and it has gone through all the approvals. So I don't need to jump across multiple applications. Um, Apex comes with really excellent dashboarding capabilities, so that's been built in. So you get reports like, what is the resource allocation looking like? How many requests did we actually fulfill for a particular business group? And in addition to that, we have some level of integration into Oracle eBusiness Suite because we want to do some of our support out of this tool now. Like if a user is not onboarded and there's some issue with the user onboarding, you can query that out of this tool and you don't have to log into multiple eBusiness Suite to figure out what's going on in the uh, user lifecycle. In addition to that, what we have is also integration with Jira. So we use Jira for email integration uh, for support tracking. So any support request that comes into the queue actually comes through an email that goes to a mail list and automatically creates a Jira ticket, Jira incident ticket. Now that's integrated into this tool. So what happens is now we have all the support requests available within this tool. So we can report on it. We can see what the performance is uh, in terms of the response time and how quickly we are able to resolve it. In addition to that, we are also building a knowledge base. So somebody new who joins the team can go through these old support requests and resolve future issues quickly. In addition to that, frequently happening support requests become enhancement requests and bug fixes, and that get resolved in the future. So we have metrics to be able to look at that kind of information. 
Okay. Any questions at this point? Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the config, uh, the architecture, a uh, very high level. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, there is no plugin. So Jira comes with a REST API, depending on how the Jira is configured in your environment. So normally it's behind an SSL. Uh, but what we have done at Qualcomm is opened up one particular instance of Jira just for REST, which is not behind an SSL. So it's easier for us to do REST calls and pull the data from Jira. Okay. So in terms of our architecture, what did we go with? So we have the Oracle XE database. That's the, the core where all the business logic resides. We have a Apache Tomcat with ORDS running in front of it, and then an Nginx reverse proxy. So that's what we, we give out to the rest of the world, because the, the instances in the back might change. So we want like a static URL, and be able to like redirect it to a different uh, uh, instance at a later point in time. All right, so let's talk about it. What does it do? Uh, at a very high level, it talks to multiple ERP systems. We start from the bottom. Uh, talks to two different ERP systems, talks to HP, PPM, talks to Jira. And it's used by both management and development and IT team. And we call it the sales center platform dashboard. Gives multi-ERP view. Uh, interfaces with the other program management tools, other Kanban board, and executive reporting and support and knowledge base. In terms of uh, how did we pull the data out? So the good thing is, if it is Oracle, the best way to get data out is create a DB link, right? Why do anything fancy? It's like speaking to yourself uh, using an interpreter. Just go, pull something from Oracle, and uh, do it. So with, with the two Oracle instances, we used the DB link. HP's PPM tool, luckily, was also running on Oracle. So we just opened up a DB link from that into the system. For Jira, we had to use basically REST APIs to uh, pull the information. In addition to that, since the, some of the visualization components, like the Oracle Jet, required us to publish the data as JSON, uh, stood up an ORDS instance to publish some of this information out as a JSON, and then consume it in the uh, Oracle Jet visualization component. And I'll show a quick demo of that. Any, any questions? All right, so let's take a look at this application. Just one question. You're uh -huh. the Oracle Correct, that's right. So, and I'll walk you through that. The process, the workflow that I normally use to build it. So, all right, so this is basically your homepage. This is where you come in and you get a list of your projects the moment you arrive. So this is more like an executive level and gives you like what are the projects we are working on, how much they are completed, and I have multiple such Gantt charts. I just picked this up for the demo today. Uh, I didn't use the visualization components from Jet. I, I use what is called as a Google's timeline. If you have looked at Google's uh, charting capability, so they have a Gantt chart and a timeline. I didn't want anything on the left-hand side that shows me the um, uh, the project name. I wanted the project name to be a, a label, so I went with this particular layout. And there it is. So what I did was I picked up the Google's timeline, and then consumed that data as um, consumed that data in Apex, and then rendered the uh, thing. For this, I didn't have to actually create a, a REST data service. So what I did was on the page. If you go into the de declaration, I have an object and a hidden field that basically pulls a clob from the database. And then on page load, I pass that to the uh, JavaScript component for the uh, Google timeline. And that renders the ta uh, timeline at that point in time. So the event is at the time of page load, basically go get the data, get the Apex. For, I used a plugin to get the clob data out of the database, and then basically attach it to the JavaScript component at that point in time, okay? Using any other plugins? Yes, yes, so let me really quickly go to that. So at the core, Oracle itself comes with really good visualization. So I'm using pretty much a lot of the Oracle core components. In addition to that, there are plugins. Uh, if you're familiar with Oracle Apex, uh, community, there are a lot of plugins out there. If you go to apex.world, there are tons of plugins there, so I'm using some of those plugins. Wherever the plugins were inadequate, then that's where I'm like going and writing, the, uh, writing uh, our own JavaScript 
and embedding it into the into the page. So it's in line. In line. In line. Yeah, everything is in line, but it's not declarative because you're actually writing JavaScript code. Okay. So ideally, you want it to be declarative because in the long run, you hand it off to somebody. Um, if it is declarative, it's much easier to manage. And the other thing is it will sustain upgrades and other things. If it is not declarative, it's normally a little bit unstable, so you want to go with declarative as much as possible, but when it cannot be done, you want to go with one of these libraries. In addition to that, the good thing is uh, Jet also has a CDN library, so you don't have to really import all the JavaScript libraries into your, into your program. You reference the CDN, uh, the content delivery network, and just load whatever components you want using require. So it uses a framework called require.js through which you can load the components that you want. So I used a combination of that to load the, uh, the components. So let's take a look at uh, this application again. Let me go through one by one. Any, uh, feel free to ask me any questions at this point in time. Go back here, okay. All right, so this is kind of the high level project Gantt chart. This is the project list. So again, not a lot of coding. Out of the box, Apex comes with uh, uh, a component which is like percentage. If you convert a number field into percent, it automatically draws a graph for you, which will kind of automatically adjust. If it's 100, it will fill the whole thing. If it is 50, it will just fill half of it. So that's the functionality here. Built a Kanban board here. The idea was to have a section where you see all the open requests in progress and closed. Very simple and should be able to drag and drop, right? And the status changes. So again, this can be done out of the box using the, not the drag and drop part, but the, the building of the Kanban uh, in Apex. Let me quickly walk you through how that is done. So assuming that you have um, the data structure defined where you have all your requests stored in the database, all you need to do is go add a region and add three sub-regions, one open, in progress and closed based on statuses. And then you basically have a list with something called as a card type. So by default, there are many uh, layouts. What I used is a cards layout uh, in Apex. So that makes it really easy to render that particular page in a card layout, which is what normally if you see other Kanban boards use. So that is a Kanban board there. Again, declarative, not a lot of coding here. Okay, so let's take a look at enhancements. In addition to that, what I have is a release calendar. So this is, again, based on the standard out-of-the-box calendar feature. Again, I went through many different products. I looked at Asana. I looked at Jira's own uh, Kanban board. I looked at many different things. The most important thing for me was being able to pull data from many different systems. and. They are on the cloud, it's not possible, right? And there were like little things I wanted to be changed. They're going to be, uh, Asana is not going to support me right away. It's going to be like a six month before my change request maybe gets through their uh, product management. So this is easier to build, so ended up rolling our own. Um, so this is the calendar. Um, the default um, interactive report has a lot of filters, so if you just want to see what your next release is going to be, hit that. And then you get all your releases and you can do your release planning. Now the interesting thing here is this view that you're looking at, the data is coming from two different systems. This is coming from the XE and this data is actually coming from HP's PPM. Normally we would have an Excel spreadsheet and we'll be jumping back and forth trying to figure out what the status is. Now I'm like, hey, what's the status? Why haven't you progressed this ticket? I can just manage everything from this particular section. And the developers love it. It's easier for them to manage as well. Now the next section is owners. This tells you who's assigned, what requests, so they can know what their priority is. In addition to that, release stats. So again, don't need to do anything special. Over a period of time, it will tell you which group you're releasing for, how many requests, and who's been working on those. Yeah. Sorry? Correct, I haven't built out the build, drill down, but there are events where you can definitely do drill downs. And it's pretty straightforward. I didn't have a need because this is more for the management to look at. Easy for me to report saying, hey, we've been working on so many different things kind of thing. The other thing I was talking about is the support request. So let me go click on that. Again, it gives you a graphical representation of where the support is coming from. So this is integrated with our 
uh, Jira tool and it pulls the department information. So it gives you an inform it gives you an idea of all the various different groups that are requesting support and you can break them down and give a stat of that. The last time we ran this was 2012, uh, yeah 2012, I have to update this. The other thing we measure ourselves is by response time. I think this is not a native chart, this is one of the plugins I believe, I don't remember now, but this tells you how quickly we are able to respond to support requests. I think so, I don't remember now, it's been a few months since I built it. The pie chart is uh, left. Polar chart, polar chart. So it gives you an idea, like we respond within one minute for a lot of the requests. Pretty much all the res uh, all the requests are uh, replied in, at least the first contact is made within the first 10 minutes. So that's kind of what we want to report and we see over a period of time how we are doing. And we as a team are pretty tenacious about uh, getting to the uh, customers right away. The other things are like, uh, this is the knowledge base that keeps a track of all the requests. And then this is the weekly trend. Again, uh, a good way to visualize how busy we are as a team is to look at your uh, weekly trend. So let me quickly log in here and pull the weekly trend. So this gives you an idea of what a day looks like <clears throat> for somebody who's uh, working on this platform. So these are basically events. Each and every droplet that you see is an event. Basically, it's a support request or some kind of a call or something happening in the system or automated alerts coming saying the pricing is not there, customer order is not being shipped. So we capture that and throw it up into what is called as a timeline. This is the Oracle Jet component. And I have a, a REST API, that a REST service that publishes this data and consumes this. And I put it in a model window because I wanted it to take up the whole screen. So that you see that you can just go through and get an idea of uh, uh, how busy or how less busy you are over a period of time. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, what we have, we have like other kind of charting, like the, for the notification, so a bunch of stack charts and uh, graphs and whatnot, and then a way for us to manage resources. So pretty much does everything that we want out of a product management tool. And if there is a need, if you need to add more functionality, it's, it's not complicated because it's low code and declarative. We just go and add new functionality. So let me go through any questions at this point. All right, so let me go through the workflow of how, how, how I go about getting the development done, right? For how do you, like if you have a Jet component that you want to incorporate into your Oracle Application Express, what's the workflow? The first thing is, start, obviously your life starts at Oracle Jet demo ground, which is basically the cookbook. So go into the cookbook, and then no, it's the visualization components that I use, so I'll go pretty much at the bottom here, and the Gantt chart, let's take a look at this. And if I like something that I want to use, uh, in the previous demo, they were saying that there's all, the whole code is here. So what I do is I open a J JS Fiddle instance and set that up. There's a CDN that's set up for Oracle Jet. So just go ahead and set the CDN. And then, there you go. Now, you also want to test dynamic data here. You have to somehow publish uh, your REST APIs into the fiddle so that you can actually see with real data. So what you have is a really good service called myjson.com. There you can just fake your data and it will give you a URL that you can reference in this particular uh, JS fiddle and you can play with it. So if you go here, this is the JSON that's coming out of myjson. The way it works is you go into myjson.com Wrong URL. So prepare your JSON in whatever system you like, paste it here, save it, it'll give you a permanent URL. Go plug that URL in JS Fiddle and then go make the changes. Once all of this is done and I'm happy with the way it is looking, I'm now ready to build some dynamic functionality into it. So I'll go into Oracle Apex at that point in time and what I do in Apex is, basically there's a page load component. So let's go take a look at one of those. Let me pick up the timeline one because I know it uses. 
so what I have is on page load uh, oh, first we have to have require here so I reference the require JS here that's the primary so that's at the page level you can do it on a global page if you're going to be using it across the whole application I am not so I do it at the page level and then you go into one of the applications or uh, one of the uh, uh, JavaScript uh, events and on load of the page what you do is you reference the libraries that you're going to use in that particular page and then require you in, in require you just mention the components that you're going to use and then the rest of the code goes at the bottom basically and then you make your uh, JSON calls from there and uh, put your put your logic in there for the visualization any any questions Yes, yes. So jQuery to parse it, uh, but I don't like to parse. If it is PL SQL, I have complete control. So I'm. Correct, correct. Do that too as well. Yeah, I've done that. I put in event handlers at page load, which are not like native to Apex and then written uh, code to actually go deal with those events, handle those events. Not, not something I want to do, because the thing is, the productivity of this platform is being trying to be low code. When you start writing a lot of code, then you're moving away from the basic premise of using this platform, okay? Uh, what's incredible about uh, uh, Apex for me is the productivity. So this is not like done by two or three developers, just by me in my free time. So this is not my day job and over a period of time was able to build this rapidly, scale it, and this has spawned other products now. So we have a totally different product manage project management tool that's been used internally by our project managers that came out of this. And somehow people in engineering and other groups caught a whiff of this and they're like, can you release the code? We want to use this for our own product management. We don't want to use Confluence or Jira or whatnot because it does, it's not integrated and we want something really simple kind of thing. So this is a platform I encourage. If you have Oracle license, then it's 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 worth giving a try. Okay. Do you use the, the REST client uh, application to generate the API? Yes. Yeah, I'll walk you through that. So here's a good example. <coughs> Let's go into the SQL workshop and go into the RESTful client. So for the pro the list of projects, I have written an API which basically gives you a list of projects. All it's doing is it's calling a, pro, a function in the, uh, in the database and it returns an application or a JSON format as the response and it gives you a JSON document with the, all the project lists. So if I go here, I already have the URL because I knew this will come up. So what you do is you basically call this URL from JavaScript and it breaks it down and gives you a JSON document. So with, the rest, uh, with the ORDS, uh, installed and publishing a RESTful API from uh, um, from Oracle is really easy. There are times where you cannot just use a query to do it. There are times where you would like to use what what they are called as I don't remember the term. They que sub queries, but they won't be like encapsulated in objects the way you want it because the JavaScript library would be expecting objects to be uh, the JSON to be in a certain format. So that's where you are not writing queries anymore. You are writing functions that return globs and then basically publish those out to uh, the, the JavaScript to consume. All right, I think that's all I had. Any other questions at this point? Went through a lot of it. Are you using Swagger at all, or what are you doing? Uh, not using Swagger. I'm not even familiar with it. I'm trying to get up to speed. And it's a moving target. I don't think it's matured yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, not. Right. Yeah. No, none of that. This is just like a, how would I put it? It's not being used across the department. So there's not a really need to create that level of documentation and abstraction at this point in time. If it becomes like an enterprise app where multiple teams start using it, then we'll start using all those uh, tool sets, not at this point in time. Yes. Which version of Apex are you using? 
Uh, this is 5.1.4 and I think it's 4.1 for Oracle Jet, the, the previous version, not the latest. Yeah, so... No, so the funny thing is, as I said, this is running on an on a, on a Oracle database that has less memory than this. It's unbelievable, and it's quick. It's incredible performance. It's like, I, I'm amazed. And the reason is, I didn't have to go procure a hardware. I didn't have to go after somebody to get approval. I could just spin this up, because the whole idea was to quickly prototype something and over a period of time see if there is a validity and a business case and then we have enough Oracle servers to move this into. So that will eventually happen, but as of now, it's just running on a virtual machine and it, what, one, one GB of SGA, that's pretty much it. And I haven't had a performance issue with it, even though it's talking to multiple systems in the back end. Oh, wow. Extremely perfect, exactly. Yeah. Correct, correct. And the reason I put the en Nginx in the front was it's going to move. So I didn't want the URLs and the bookmarks and all that kind of move. So I'll point the en uh, reverse proxy to something else once the move actually happens. All right. The plugins, okay. So let me walk you through. Most all, all the plugins are free. I have seen only one paid plugin from Oracle, Apex. Pretty much all of them are free. So if you go to apex.world and click on plugins, you have a whole library of plugins, okay? Plugins you can write your own as well, okay? The other thing is, if you're familiar with JavaScript, uh, you don't have to use the plugin, but then plugin is a declarative way to do it. And it does some of the heavy lifting for you, so you can get away with it. So I first look for the plugin. If I don't find what I'm looking for, then I'll go do my hack my own, basically. And that's correct. 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 Yeah, and the community is really helpful. Well, for the whole Oracle Jet and Apex, really good combination, and the community is really helpful. So if you get stuck, you post something, you definitely get a response real quick. Yes. No, Oracle Jet, you, it's, it's a free download from Oracle. It's open source. You don't need an account or anything. You just go download and start using it right away. What I highly encourage is go to the Oracle Jet cookbook page. So they have a cookbook with really good examples. And it gives you a flavor of what Jet is capable of. So you go here, here are all the different applications, right? And then let me open up one of them. So you go into the diagram. What they have here is not just a working application, also the code, the source code that works with it. So right here. So this is the kind of the application, let's say the UI layer. And here's the HTML and this is the JavaScript. So all of this is kind of available for everybody to play with, and they have really good samples. For pretty much all the use cases that you want, they have samples in there, and you can leverage those to build your application. And I, I, I didn't have to really go through the documentation too much, I just went through this and figured out how it's working. I'm not using that, so no. I've not started using that. Play with the, or the REST client API, because uh, that's very nice to be able to encapsulate got all it. of the REST APIs. And then, or you're doing the apex.json package like APIs with your SQL query blocks okay. to bring REST at the time of uh, SQL alias. Got it. So there's thousands, thousands. Of, there's just so many ways to do it. I haven't played with that enough. One of the reasons is I'm running XE, and some of our services are running SSL. XE doesn't have wallet support. So I'm not able to reach the REST endpoints at all. Oh, okay. So till I get it into a 12C or somewhere where a wallet can be stored, sure. and then I can have the ACL configured, uh, I'm going to be limited. And that external component calling curl to go external component calling curl 
protocol. Well, Data, bring it back and then parse it. Parse it. Okay. So you can get around wallets. Got it, got it. The other thing, uh, I, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to cover is this apex underscore JSON um, function or is a package. So if you want to create uh, JSON objects from Oracle database, this is what you would use. Uh, it's much easier. I tried using the regular way where I hand coded it. And then eventually I found a blog post that said this is the right way to do it. And I kind of ended up using that. It's very helpful to generate JSON documents, basically using cursors and whatnot. It opens the braces for you, closes the braces, adds the commas and all that kind of thing. You say open object and close object at the very bottom, it will do the rest of the things for you. So go check it out. And there's, I think, a couple really good blog posts on that topic which you can uh, kind of look at and get an idea of how to go about using it. All right. Have you looked at the Quick SQL application? No, not yet. No, no. The Quick SQL application is nice because it generates all the field SQL package APIs. Mm -hmm. Again, same thing, you build declarative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all part of the standard application. Application. Okay. That gives you the ability to then say, I have a thousand packages, I mean, a thousand uh, tables and entity relationships. In one second, you build all, all the SQL based APIs, and then you can build the REST API calls against that, and then you're done. Okay. Are you Oracle? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you, seem to be, <laughs> you seem to have a lot of knowledge about it, so. <laughs> yeah, so. I apologize, everybody. Say again? Well, it's part of the, if you go to the uh, applications that are pre installed, it's called the um, uh, Quick SQL. Quick SQL, yeah. You probably yeah. install it and run it. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at that. Cause that allows you to be an architect without having to have any knowledge of Oracle. Got it. it everything. everything for you. All right. Any any other questions? Otherwise, I think we're we're going to finish a little early. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It has an export functionality. You just go export it. It comes out as a SQL. You just SQL uh, dump. And then you also need to have all the dependent objects available in the destination database, right? If you have tables and whatnot, it's referring. So you, they, they need to be there in the dependent database, in the target database as well. And in addition to that, Apex also has a dependency report. The first thing you'll do is run a dependency report and see what are the objects that that particular application is dependent on. Uh, which objects you need. Yeah, it will tell you which objects you need. Yes. Uh, did I answer you or come again? Plugins. Plugins. Let's say, um, okay. Plugins, right? uh, I do not know. I think. Pl I do not know about that, whether the plugins come out. It does come? OK. I am not sure, but it seems like the plugins also come. And then you won't that. Oh, really? With the five version, right? It's it's leap and bounds ahead of what it was. I've been in the I've been using Apex since two thousand four. The first time I was exposed to Apex was when I was at Oracle. I was working at Oracle, and it was called Project Marvel, I believe, oh, yeah. internally. Yeah, and then it was HTML DB, and I was amazed because I was a J2E developer, and this seemed so easy, coming from a Java background where you're writing JSP. So I I've been seeing the progress. And with the JavaScript framework, there's actually no limitation anymore because if there's something that Apex doesn't do, you just write JavaScript to do it. And with the rest, there's no limitation on just getting data out of Oracle. As long as it's available as a REST endpoint, you can get pretty much get the data from anywhere. 
and so the limitations which were there have kind of kind of receded in a lot of ways. And REST also supports all of those no SQL DBs. No SQL. If you have the exactly. Yeah. All right. Absolutely, I will. Uh, I think there's a way they're going to publish the slides out. Uh, yeah, so I will give it to them, and I think they're going to put it on the portal or something. So I will make sure it's available out there. Okay.